G'day, here you go, I'm Indianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia, welcome to my video. We'll get some sizes up there in centimetres, inches for the size of the canvas, and also want to get some colours going up the screen there for you as well, so you can write them down if you're painting along with this tutorial. And check out the links in the description below, there's about a dozen there. Join my art group, see what's available for purchasing, all sorts of good stuff down there, okay? So, come on over here, and I'll get you started on what we're going to do. Now I've got my craft white paint, poster paint, student paint, and I'm mixing it with some clear retarder. That retarder slows down the drying time of that acrylic paint. This is cheap white paint, just something I want to condition the canvas with, so as I can get my sky to happen the way I want. So I've got a horizon line about there, and so I'm going to get all this crisscross into the two for that canvas and just get it in there that area I don't need it anywhere more than that until I want to put it anywhere more than that because painting over this stuff like trees and mountains and stuff can be quite daunting if you haven't done it very much now I want to stroke that left and right to get all those brush strokes out of there and have it nice and neat ready to put our sky color on okay now I've got some permanent linsrin and I'm using cerulean blue I want to create some kind of purpley dark weathered sky okay something like that and a bit more blue now that's why i had two dollops of blue there i want to govern how much i want in there and i've also got some gray on the ready so i'm just gonna try i've got a darker gray and we'll see how that goes as well in there just to grey this up. And this is the colour I want the sky to be. So now I want to get it in both sides of that brush. Okay, so when I'm putting it onto the canvas, I'm not going to get any surprises. That's pretty much the colour I'm looking for. The white on the canvas is going to help it lighten up. So here we go from the horizon line. And I want to bring it pretty much up, crisscross it right into the edges of the canvas there. And get it all across that canvas okay this is just a cheap flat brush from this hardware store now i've got pretty much half of that done now i've got to get more of that paint that i mixed let's hope i've made enough for that sky area okay i think we'll get it now i'm going to crisscross it all the way in there get it all over there see that's the color i want like a gray stormy evening end of the day type of sky colour. Beautiful, simple, get some of that dark up there. Simple, effective and beautiful. I love that. Now watch what we do here. We're going to do a simple moon and our clouds within the sky. What I will do, I'm just going to grab some of that red and more blue and some more grey. I want to kind of get the bottom a little bit on the darker side than what it is. Yeah, get it darker, mainly at the bottom half, because that's the bit in the distance where it's dark. That'll do. Now grab yourself a pouncer or paint a circle on for your moon. I'm going to grab some titanium white, now your moon can be full circled or just half quarter, eighth, whatever it turns out to be. Let nature take its course on the canvas sometimes when you're doing skies, moons and clouds. And I want the moon about, there's centre, so I'm going to come over here a bit. And I want to come about, my horizon line's there, I'm going to have that window there, so I want this about here. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll just stamp it on first and see how it's looking. Not too bad, a bit flimsy. So I'm just going to add a bit more paint, dab it to the pouncer, and go again and give it a bit of a turn just so it's pushing it into there. There you go, that's it, perfect. I don't need any more than that. Now my next procedure is putting the clouds onto that sky. I want to use my fan brush, that's a hog bristle, and I'm using a couple of um, brushes I got from the hardware store I like to use these to blend okay and I've just got simple titanium white there 
I want to get on my fan brush and I like to shape the clouds with my fan brush and then create the shape I want for them okay so I want to sort of come here I want to start here okay I'm stamping this on I'm not going to try and brush it in okay and that's all going to I'm creating I'm going to create like a, a porthole there you know how clouds create their own sort of porthole so I'll get something there just so as we can blend now with blending you need your brush and a cloth paper towel kitchen cloth something like that and start creating turmoil like I said I want to keep the top sharp and I want to blend the bottom down so here we go we're creating turmoil look at that I'm just twisting moving it look at that see see what happened there on top of that beautiful gray evening sky and the um, retarder in all there is helping that stay wet and we get to paint like an oil artist doing a beautiful wet looking magic sky <coughs> get some of this all there <coughs> down down I'm getting rid of any patterns that might be forming as well I don't like patterns in my sky there we go how's that looking that's looking like clouds now you need to wash that brush if it's got a lot of build up on it okay brush is washed now I want to do like a big vibrant spot as well somewhere here so I want to get something real bright here I'm stamping it on right there like that and that can fade over there and we'll sort of come I want to try and bring this I want to keep it white but if I feel the whites losing it I'll stop and blend and I'll reload the brush up which I think I will do so there we go now I want to keep this vibrant bright area here and I want to blend this back to the left hand side of the canvas there like that okay tinker it around How's that looking? That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Get some of this up here done. Sink it down and wisp it back here. All right, now I'm loading my brush up again. I want nice white here and I'm trying to create that window within the clouds there and then I'll come back from it, okay? So here, turn the brush around. I want bits of this grey within this bit that I put on as well. So it'll create that fluffy thickness with weather in there, okay? Something like that. And the blending is what will pretty much bring it home. A lot of this will be faded up there. Try not to think, let the brush make nature's clouds for you. Watch this, the turmoil. I want to keep the bottom reasonably sharp like I did here. And then the top half of it can be blended to buggery. So we're just going to blend that a little bit. It'll tickle the, let's so call the underneath top then. We'll tickle that. I'm tickling it, sitting it down. And now I want to blend turmoil keeping some of the grey within that so it's not just a big wash of white cloud there it's got substance in it and then we'll add some yumminess as well okay so wipe it what's important to wipe your brush if you don't you're just going to keep moving the same paint all over your canvas there turmoil twist it on and off stamp it look at your work Practice this if you feel you can't do it straight away. See how I've got like a really white glare there? I want to try and soften that back into the cloud body if I can. Somewhere there. I'll add some yumminess to disguise that as well. Now I've washed my brush, I've picked up more paint. I want to get something over here, over here. I want some yumminess within this. So let's kind of 
blend things together where you want them to put your yumminess in there the yumminess will be sit down okay and some over here as well you'll sit that down with your blending but leaving the vibrancy there okay twisting dabbing pushing stamping the way I blend, you're not grinding it like this. It won't work if you want to blend the way I'm teaching you, okay? There we go. And this is going to fade up to there. Beautiful. Okay, I've cleaned the brush and now I want to bring something over here and bring this one down. So I want to sort of come, let's say, from about here. I can join onto there actually. Turn it around. You want nice and white here. Try and come down, creating that. Pick up a bit more white without contaminating it. Come across here like so. Okay, see what I've done there? Now we want to blend this way down from that, okay? So, what? and then I'll add yumminess appropriately where I will need it. Tickle those tops a little bit and just lightly sit that down into that wet grey sky paint there. It's still wet. The retarder's allowed it to stay wet. If you never use retarder, that'll be pretty dry by now. And it'll be very difficult to try and achieve what I'm showing you here now without it. Turmoil, look at that, boom, boom. See how it just makes little curls and loops within there? Now I've washed the brush, I've loaded it up and I just want to add my yumminess now to this to get those really bright areas back in there where I feel I might have lost them. Uh, I want something there. And where else I feel this could have, I want that down there. I'll kind of fix that up there a bit as well. That's not too bad, that's not too bad. We'll get something over here and some yumminess in there that can be blended down. Can you still see that there? Yes, you can. All right. Let me finish this bit here off. It's pretty hard to get it without my hand being in the way, but I'll try my best, eh? There we go. Sit this yumminess down. See, that's why you need to practice this. You'll sort of know what brush movements are going to work for you. And over here, sitting some of that down. There we go. That's pretty much the sky. I do want to put just a little bit of yumminess around here. Because that's close to the moon, all right? And maybe a... Just something to distort that. That's it. Now I've just dried this mainly where the horizon line area is because now I want to put the water half in using that craft paint and retarder again because the water needs to have some doesn't need too much retarder in the water because I'm not blending like I do with clouds and putting this down will help with the um, putting the watercolor onto the canvas because if it's just a dry canvas it's very dry wanting and hard to get on there so this will make it easier now you can dry it real thoroughly 
if you want and mask it up so you don't get your sky ruined but I mainly want this craft paint and retarder on the water half now work out what base you want for this painting whether you want two coming off this from the middle on each side or just one coming right in past the middle whatever like that okay I'm probably going to go for the one I've just wiped my brush. Now this colour I mixed for the sky, the cerulean blue, I'm grabbing that again with some permanent alizarin. Getting that colour there and some grey into it just to make the water colour. It doesn't have to be the same value as the sky so long as it's somewhere near it. And I might, well, let's grab a bit of white, see if we can tint it a bit just to make it a different value than what the sky was. Use some of this white there. I mean, the white on the canvas is gonna tint it more as well. And I wanna just get the water done. Now, a lot of this is gonna be covered up with land as well, but at least it's there, you know? And if you do wanna do reflections, you can. Let's get this all the way there. I'm going to have land there anyway, that's not so bad. I'm going to get my finger and just rub across there to get rid of any ridge of paint. I want to mainly get this crisp there. I don't want a white line between it. About there where the land's going to be, that'll do it. Now, we want the bottom, if anything, pick up more of that paint and get the bottom darker and lighter out to the horizon line. It just creates that look that the water's going from you out to there darker and lighter out to there. If you want, look at that. I just noticed we do have our moon there so we can put that element in the water as well. So I'll just grab a bit of titanium white on my thumb. Roughly the width of the moon that's up there. I'm just going to get that. Hopefully this will work. I should have really... Where's the moon? The moon's there. Can you see the moon? So the moon's there. So I'm going to come in a diagonal. Never put these like that or like that. They're always in a straight line down, okay? That'll do. Simple, just like that. And then grab the brush you were using just to waterfy that reflection lightly does it that'll do it if you whisper and why not add the shimmer as well because it's a moonlight so as i don't get any paint on my sky i'll just push this tape roughly to the horizon line there but I'm only going to push it on the edges here because I've dried the sky but I don't want to push that on and then peel it off and get bits of the sky peeled off okay then down on the palette we've just got some craft paint there okay pull some out in a blanket bit of water and a flat edged toothbrush now you can use fan brush whatever I love using this I just use this way and we're gonna flick our shimmer onto the water concentrate it here and this is just lovely pick up some more as you need it lovely shimmer look at that I do need a bit more water I'm just loading the brush up again Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. This just makes it when it's in a... See, I've got some up there, you dag. I'm concentrating it where that main bit is. That'll do. That will do. Let's pull that tape off. See how it looks real realistically shimmering? Oh, 
Look at that, it just sat there and it's still sticky. There we go. I did get a few little dots in the sky, but I think we can live with that, eh? So now I've given this a dry where I want to put my uh, horizon line land area, and I'm going to use some black and burned umber, just because I don't want it just pure black, but I want it dark just to map it in. I'm going to use my bullshit stick, come out in the middle there, and I pretty much want it to come about here. It'll come up, up there somewhere, up there. Now have your paint a little bit wet, but not too wet. Work out the consistency. Move your stick down. And I want this to sort of come on a level, but sort of bowing down and then coming along there like that. Okay, I'll get this point done. See, this stick allows me to rest on there and get things looking nice and great, gratingly great. Now, I don't want to dig too much into that surface because I know that it's got retarder underneath it. And if I start lifting it up, I'll have to stop and wait for it to dry. So be aware of that. That's why sometimes you see me masking up the area so I don't get retarder on it. So I'm just pretty much mapping this in. Now that's the land mass. Now I want to block in the trees as well. Now it's always good if you can, let's say about out here, we'll try and get some air in between these groups here. Very lightly, I'm using a filbert brush now. So probably about there, bit of a gap, and then I'll come down. And that's, that'll be the base for those trees out there. Now you use what brush you want. I'm gonna use my filbert brush to do my filberty trees. So I'm gonna, these can be evergreens, whatever. So I'm doing, I'm just blocking these in, but leaving some air in between them. Because if it's just all blocked in, in one big block, it can kind of ruin the the realicity, the bullshit effect you're going for within your painting. Okay, how's that looking? Yeah, that's looking all right. So that's just about here, the bo they're the bottoms there, about here, up there. Now we'll give this a dry so we can put our other colours on top. Okay, that's all dry. I've got forest green and arillamide yellow. Now I want to use the arillamide just to brighten up this green a little bit when I need it, but I need this green, I'll just do a little bit. I want it to be dark first, but I'm adding a little bit of that arillamide just to, so it'll stand out on top of that blacky brown colour. Now the ground, I want to do the ground first. And the ground is going to have some bits of grey rocks with it as well. I want to get this against the water there. Maybe a bit more yellow into that one. Just to the bottom. Take your time with this. No rush, okay? Just get this dabbed around the bottom edge of that island. I know what I'm doing. Now the trees, let's get on with them. I want green within here. This is the, the green, the dark green within the trees. Leave it, some of that brown there, don't kill all of it. That brownie black, leave some of that there, don't kill all of it, okay? And it's like a grass field here. So we're gonna get like a grassy bank. So we're gonna 
dab that on as well as I come across that landmass. And then I'll highlight it and put shadows in there appropriately. So pretty much here. And that's why I dried the brown black because if I didn't, this green wouldn't be sitting on top of it. It'll be mixing into it and turning into mud. So a good thing about your acrylics, you can stop and dry them. As I'm going along, this green is slowly going up to create perspective within this hill. Okay, so it's low here and it's coming up here and coming down. So if anything, it's a it's a hill hilly bank. So get all this colour mapped in roughly the way you want it. And the same with the trees within there. Now I'm getting the trees and they're going to go to... They'll have some shadow under there, like a, some darkness. And this is where you can put ones in front of others. Just like that. Great day here in Perth today. Sunny, sunny Sunday. Love it. Beautiful day. Okay, we're finished out. I'm just going to sort of join some of this like so. Not too much. I just don't want it a nice, neat black band looking there. I want it sort of looking like nature intended it to look, you know. Now, while I wait for that to dry, I'll add the grey within there as well, all right? Okay, now I'm just using that neutral grey that I had before. I want these nice... sharp but airy you know like they look like stone out there getting hit by the moonlight and if you feel it's too dark I'm adding a little bit of black into that I, feel, I mean it's too bright you know whitey looking let's see this and these are like just sort of a rocky edge against this landmass there get some of that darkened up that's it. And I can fill in, see the black that I'm painting it on? You want to leave some of that in the middle of it. You don't want to go over all of that, otherwise you lose your depth. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Get some up there. Well, I hope they look like stones anyway. I'll, I'll detail them up. Now I'm grabbing some white to that mix that I just had, okay? And we'll get it a bit brighter, just so as we can highlight some of that now. Not everywhere, just highlighting it. Okay, let me have a look in the monitor. That's working all right. I do know that some people get caught, they've done a whole layer of that color and they do uh, the whole highlighter color over the same amount. You just need to do bits here and there. Create your little scallops high and low points within it. The more you do it, the more you'll understand how it should look. And that's the main thing in getting a good art piece is knowing how it should look and executing that. Okay, I've just given that a dry. I'm gonna just join up some of these trees to the ground now. I've just mixed up some of that. Get these nice and skinny. You want these fat. They're probably the bits that you can 
see. Well, obviously you can see them if you can see them, eh? Now, I'm going to grab the yellow that I had with that green and start getting it just a bit more highlighty now. Try and work out the right value of highlight you want. If you go too dark or too bright, it's just not going to work right. So that's what you've got to try and find. That's what you've got to train yourself to do, find values. And we're going to sort of get bits here and there. I want some of that edge done there. Nice and little. Get this one done. Front of there. Leave those sky bits there. How's that looking? It's a bit close. When I zoom back, it'll probably look a bit better. But the, the centre of these are not going to be highlighted. It's just going to be halo highlighted, if anything. If you know what I mean. Because the light's behind. It's just a matter of putting the light, getting the light in the right spot. Okay, now the foreground is needs some light picking through. So I want to get some, I want to highlight some of this grass and I want to get some of it coming through here. Now the shadows on stuff, they are what bring things to realism, making them look real, having shadows and light castings. That's what you notice in real life, but some people forget to put it in paintings, even I do. But see how that just looked like some light sneaking through there? And we'll do the same here somewhere. Just some kind of light sneaking through. Coming over. And then the same here. Got a bit of light grass here. making all sorts of um, shadows within these trees. See how light I'm touching? I don't want big blobs. Can get this green that we put here. We'll get some light hitting that as well, so as we can see that colour now, because this highlighted colour will allow that to be seen. Just pockets of it here and there. Now I've, I want to put just a little bit more wow there because it's looking a bit two toned. So I'm grabbing, I'm just grabbing some more yellow and pulling into that colour there, okay, to get it a bit more highlighted and just a little bit here and there of this color okay so I probably want some about mm. too bad it's a bit <laughs> so just getting that darker gray probably mixing it a little bit darker Okay, finding the right value, that'll probably do me. Now, if you like yours the way it is, leave it. You don't have to have a reflection. I'm going to try and put a reflection in. I'll start from about here. That way I can cover it up if I don't like it. So I'm going to kiss the bottom of the island there, just like so. These trees are what's getting reflected. So not all this is in the reflection. I'm only going to capture from about there up into the water okay just to make it easy on myself so I want to 
come down and create that kind of silhouetting shadow there within the water and I'll, I'll do a bit and I'll have a look and if I like it well then I can go all the way where I appropriately need it but if I don't like it I can put something in front of this and you can always because it's a reflection you can always have some pulling right down like that okay how's that looking not too bad so I'm gonna come from about here not too much I'll just do little bits there like so because there's that shimmer there so I've got to allow for that being hindering this there <sighs> I'm just grabbing some black, getting some black into that grey there. Just some darker value now. Just something to break it up. Now we've got our water there. If you want to do this, here's another thing. We can put some glaze over that to give it like it's got a film. Now we just want a little bit of white paint here. Look at this. A little bit of white paint just in the brush. Oh, that'll do about that much. Now I want to get the glaze, mix that with the glaze. I've dried the canvas and you just want to kiss probably some water against the um, edge of that land out there instead of using a knife. Let's see how this is going to work. Oh, well, what I'll do, I'll just do my film, make it like film of water. From about there, keeping them level, and we're just sinking the, the reflection down with some glaze, okay? Don't press too hard with glaze because you can unbind the paint and you'll have a big lifting up mark in your painting. Do this however you feel comfortable and works for you. See, that's why I put not much paint in it because the, the glaze itself, I've never used it on its own, but I've always added a little bit and I have learnt that putting too much in just kills what you're trying to do. Okay, I want to finish this painting off now. So I've just sprayed some water onto me brown and black there. And I pretty much want to come across here, right? up there and some sort of tree up there so I want to let me stamp this on first because if I push it it's going to lift all that retarder so I'm using this brush just to get some kind of a grassy edge now see how it's lifting the white there watch it's going to pull it up if I'm too vigorous and violent with it now we'll put a tree there so I'll just grab some more brown and black, mix it together. Now use what brush, I'm going to try this, put her on a brush, see how it goes. And I want something coming mainly off the edge here, so I'll just stamp this all the way up. Yep, the paint isn't wet enough, so I'm going to spray the paint on the palette. And then reload the brush, coming right to the, leaving some air there, yeah up and down motion. I got this one. This is one that I've had from the hardware store and it makes good scenery foliage. That's not the trunk, that's just the basis of the tree. We've got, you know, stuff coming out. It's all here. Now all that's dry, I want to get some green and put this background in before we put the tree in front of it. So I'm going to pick up my putter on a brush and I've just got some sap green here. And we'll just use this. It's because we wanted a different value than the tree green. And I pretty much want to come there. That's the ground. Okay, beautiful. Get on there and start moving off the brush. I hate doing grass, you know. I'm not the best at it, but going to 
come there. I don't like this green, that looks horrible, but I'm gonna pick up some yellow and put with it now just to highlight it. Some here and there. There we go. And then I might get a script liner just so as I can um, do some long grassy bits later on once I've finished. But I've got to dry this. I'm just getting the script liner, putting some long detail ones here and there. But try and get them sharp. Something out here. Now back to your scenery brush, whatever is good enough for you to use for your scenery. I need some water down there. Uh, I'm going to load this up with the forest green now. I'll stamp it into the brush and we want to get some nice dark green within that black that we stamped on previously. So what I will do, I'll grab me liner, me thicker one. I'll grab a bit of the darker colour, which is the brown and the black. And I'll just quickly put, let's say something here. A trunk, maybe something there. These are darker, and just some trunks up here. And we want to let's start getting this on. Can you see the top up there? There we go. We'll get some dark green all the way up here leaving some of the black i really should have had the sky peeking through this um i went and put too much dark not to worry and we've got enough water there as well We've got the Rillamide yellow again, and we're pretty much grabbing most of that with some green. So we're going to make a yellowy green. We don't want big, thick stuff like that. We want to try and get it real hairy if we can. Even that's not... Let me get that again. I'll start from the top. We'll try and get some... There we go. It's just some highlighty stuff all on the edges here. How's that looking? Well, see how that's a bit bright? I can always come back and replace that with some darker values. But this is all bright on the edge there and tapering in within the bush as well. Right in front of those trees there, different green. So, if I can. Now I'm going to get a bit more yellow. And we want to just... On the edge, very lightly touch it. Put a little bit in there. Pick a little bit in there now. Just get something in there. I'm just adding little bits of um, branches tapering out from the tree just to try and give it a bit more realism with that dark blacky browny colour. And these can be loaded up with some detail as well to sink them back. Okay. Probably not very noticeable, but we'll see how we get there. Now I'm just going to grab the yellow, use that same one, the green, the yellow, just to, let's see how we go here, just to, yeah, I want darker green, darker green, darker green, just to sit 
leafy ones out here in the open just to break it up so you haven't just got a cheap snotty um, what would you call it um, tree you've got a bit more value there for your dollar for your coin so this is just coming out you can detail some of this like coming out as well just to is that doing any justice yeah it is thank goodness so I'm joining that onto these branches here and these will be highlighted as well now get some of the yellow and I'm gonna well let's get more of the yellow where is the yellow try and get some of this there we go yellow fight on top of those green ones you put there don't cover all those green ones up you can kind of join this into those ones like that now here just put some over the branch there How's it looking? Is it looking like? Yeah, it kind of looks tree to me anyway. This takes so long. Bring some of that back in there. See how we bring some of this back over there. Set that trunk down. I'll put a bit of a trunk in there. I'm just winging it here. I really, really am. And you can do this. Now I'm just going to sign this and we'll whack a frame on it. And be sure to check out the links in the description below. This painting and others like it and prints of all my paintings are available to purchase. Contact me on Facebook, links below. All payments are done through PayPal. I want to thank all my patrons who support me every month. Okay, there we go. Let's have a look at that. There we go. That's not too shabby, is it? We've got our evening sky with some beautiful clouds, a bit of a reflective lake there, some water, distant trees and another kind of a tree there. I did my best. I tried to break it up and get it coming into the painting as well. And just remember, you can do that. Okay, so be sure to check out the links, like I said, in the description below. Share, like and subscribe. And if you like what I'm doing, make sure you tell your friends. But if I've upset you in any way, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.